the Navy is very much like where we, where we are. We're in the same boat, or ship. We prefer ship in the Navy. And so in the Navy, when, you, when you're all in the same boat, you're all pulling for the same thing. There was a time we were approaching Jamaica for a port call. Very exciting, we wanted to get off the ship and run around Jamaica. The engines blew out and we bobbed like a cork in the middle of the ocean. Were we, I was a communication officer, was I pulling for the engineers? Was I making fun of them? Like, haha, you guys really blew it? No. I wanted them to fix those darn engines as soon as possible and get us into port because we were tired of looking at each other and wanting to get off this piece of metal. We're in the same ship. Are we in stormy seas? Absolutely. Are they ever making? Absolutely not. But we all gotta go the same direction, have the same vision. Second part of the quote, I prefer to build myself up by strengthening others and helping them feel good about their jobs and themselves. When that happens, the work improves and my own morale leaps. Last night we had a terrific event at the school district. We had our extraordinary service recognition where we recognized 520 years of service to the school district. It was amazing. It was a lot of fun. And it was fun because I had a chance to emcee it and told the stories of our classified and certificate members. And their stories are much more fun and funny and touching than anything I could make up or David Letterman or Jay Leno or pick your person. So we had a terrific time celebrating what they do and what they bring to us. I'll finish with one story because I don't have much time, right? Yeah, one last sea story, one Navy story. We were approaching uh, San Francisco Harbor. And as you may know, flying into SFO, San Francisco Airport, sometimes there's this crazy stuff that shuts down visibility called fog. We're coming into the port and a massive wall of fog. We couldn't see anything. We couldn't see the front of our own ship, which is 50 yards from the bridge house. Our lights are on, they're on bright. San Francisco, very busy uh, port and very treacherous waters. If you've ever been out of the Presidio, I mean, they can have 10 foot standing waves. It's a very small opening to a massive body of water. So when the tides come in and go out, the water's extremely treacherous. Yeah, the waters aren't Alcatraz, right? We've all heard the stories. On top of that, it's a very busy port with Alameda and whatnot, so you've got a very narrow area and a lot of ships going through it. We were coming in at 4 a.m., we were tired, half the crew's asleep, and we can see nothing. So we send out lookouts to the front of the ship um, because we can't even see the front of our own ship. Now, what are they going to do? Not a lot, because they can probably only see 10 feet in the fog as well. They can probably scream before we hear a big bang. Not exactly the most helpful thing. And so I was the helm safety officer, and I stood by the helms and made sure that all the orders the officer driving the ship gave were executed. You, you couldn't imagine how many times someone will say, turn left rudder 15 degrees, and they'll say, I captain left 15 degrees rudder, and what do they do? They turn right. <laughs> so when you're in dangerous waters, you know, and again, ships you typically take a mile to turn around, so when you're in something that's like 100 yards wide, you're you know, in very restrictive maneuvering. So I remember as we approached uh, San Francisco, we could see nothing, we could see nothing. We're sounding fog signals all around us. There are also fog signals from other ships, so we knew there were a lot of ships in the area. We didn't know if they were at anchorage or moving around. And then the, the navigation officer's name was Lieutenant Dave Lewis, great guy. He says, Captain, I have no idea where we are. <laughs> and we look over at him, and he's flailing. Now, you, your charts, Navy charts are, you know, four feet long, right? He's flailing through charts. And my stomach went 50 feet down, and I'm sweating. I'm like, and look at this guy who's always calm, always in control, and he's saying, we've lost radar fixes. We can't find the light tower. Where the, uh, we were taking uh, bearings off of the uh, lighthouses in the area, off of the rock points. We were in so close, our radars failed. They were only really good for about two mile range. So we, were, we knew we were in close to the land, which is bad news when you don't know where you are and can't see where you are. And I just remember looking at this guy just flailing. And I've never seen him flail before, and this is really the last moment I wanted to see him flail. <laughs> Our commanding officer was a guy named Gene McGallard, and I, I'm looking at a room full of people who are better leaders than he was, okay, and I won't tell you, everything I learned about bad leadership I learned from Gene McGallard, we won't repeat that today. So we're all watching him, he's the captain, we're in trouble, where are we, and we, you know, in treacherous waters heading close to the Golden Gate Bridge. So what's he going to do? And we've all seen him make bad decisions in tough places before, but this is about as tough as we get. So he just act calm, didn't yell, didn't blame, didn't throw anybody under the bus. He just started making the best decision he could at the time. All of a sudden, in front of us pops up a white light. What the heck is the white light? Is it a buoy? Which buoy is it? Is it the Golden Gate Bridge? Is it another ship? We were almost worried it was another ship, because the worst situation you can meet is what's called a T situation, where one ship approaches the, other, the middle of another. 
So he, we're all freaking out. You know, it's not Captain. It's not on the charts. It's not on the charts. Well, it's got to be on the charts because it's in front of us, and it's the only thing we can see. So he calmly guides us around the right hand side of it, and as we get underneath, we hear cars above us. We can't see the Golden Gate Bridge, but we can hear the cars driving above us. It was the center span of the Golden Gate Bridge. So the lesson for us, and the good news was on the way out, the whole crew was so freaked out they asked me to drive the ship out later on. That day. I'm so happy about that. But the thought was gone, so it went better. Turns out the frigate behind us almost did the same thing. So I can see the front page of the New York Times. You know, two U.S. warships cracked up on the Golden Gate Bridge. Didn't happen, thank God. The lesson from it, as I shared at the management retreat this year, is tough times. You don't have all the information you may necessarily need, but you've got to make the best decision you can in the moment and stay calm. And this guy, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm looking at a room full of people who are better leaders than Gene McGalliard, uh, and we're in good hands, and that's what he did, and he got us through it. And that was probably his best moment. Um, and we were very, very impressed uh, by that, and then, you know, he made bad decisions later on, we you know, gave him a hard time. Um, but uh, that's it, we're in a boat together, we're in the same ship, it's all of our ship, and um, it's a powerful team. I mean, just sitting back there and listening to the last, you know, several presentations, I'm blown away. I'm thrilled to have my kids do some of these things uh, in the future. We're embracing uh, 21st century learning, and it's exciting, and I'm excited about the ship that I'm in with you folks. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. We have a little surprise for you. Our next guest is Captain G. McGallagher. Our next guest is uh, the fellow that's put together the proposed LVUSD technology plan and uh, strategy. Please welcome Neil Tickton. Where do you want to stand? I don't know. You good? So um, we're a little short on time, and I'm going to kind of toss out my presentation and just kind of wing this here real quick on, on stuff. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm the one that led the creation of the technology strategy for Lost Virgins. This is the proposed strategy that the board and the district and the community are discussing now and hopefully will move forward with. And some of you may not know how this all got started. In the, in the, about a year and a half ago, Dr. Zimri approached me and he said, we'd like you to help in creating a strategy. And my first response to that was, who else can we get? <laughs> and uh, after some arm twisting and convincing, I, let, I, I agreed to go ahead and do it, have my company do it. The foundation paid for a big chunk of it. Uh, my company do donated probably three quarters of it. Uh, and we went ahead and we moved forward on creating this small little document that is approximately 200 pages long and 70,000 words. And people ask, well, what is the strategy about? Well, there's 200 pages, but the five main points of the strategy are as follows. First and foremost, to uh, take all of these technology islands, as I call them, all these, these pockets of really great ideas that you've seen good examples of today, and to bring them together in, in a way that they can be shared across the entire district, and across grades, and across different levels of schools. And you do that through having technology leadership, and that's in the form of a chief technology officer. Now, this is something that is very common in the enterprise space, in the business space. It's something that we uh, see, at, in many cases, we see directors in different technology positions around uh, the country, different school districts. But in, the, in California, uh, to really call them a chief technology officer as opposed to a director of technology is a very different kind of mindset to do. And it takes the best practices that we've already seen work on the, on the private sector side. That person would head up an organization called Media and Technology. Media technology would bring together the media centers and all of the things that are all these technology islands around the district. Moving on from there is a wiki, which I will come back to in just a moment. Uh, optimizing the uh, MIS side um, of, the, um, uh, of, the, of the district where we have all the, te the technology operations and giving them the ability to work smarter instead of harder. Uh, giving teachers engaged uh, tools, better tools for engaged learning. And uh, lastly, 